This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Direct us, O God. Teach us, Holy Spirit. Reveal to us the truth, and we know that the truth sets men free. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the words you spoke. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Help me today to deliver the truth and nothing but the truth. Help me to rightly divide thy word. May thy will be done, may souls be born into the family of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Revelation 19, 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. Give honor. He is worthy of all honor and glory and dominion and power. Let us give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, right, blessed, and that means happy, are they that are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell in his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I read verses 7, 8, 9, and 10, Revelation 19. Now, I've been discussing with you the past days the marriage of the Lamb. And I've asked the question, why? Why did the Holy Spirit prompt John to pin down the words, happy are they that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb? Why didn't he say, happy are they that are called to the marriage supper of the Creator? Because indeed, as I have proven, he is Creator of all things. Why didn't he say, Blessed are they that are called to the marriage supper of the king. The king of kings, he is indeed the king of kings. And of course, as I said, there are more than 700 different titles given to the Son of God in the Bible. He could have used any one of them, but the Holy Spirit said, Blessed, happier they that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, I pointed out three scriptures that I'm going to give you some more today. Scriptures that call Jesus the Lamb of God. In John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 29, John said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin, S-I-N, of the world. The sin of the world, all the world. The Lamb of God does it. Now listen, don't you misunderstand me now. I'm saying if you listen, you won't misunderstand. John didn't say, Behold the King of Kings which taketh away the sin of the world. He didn't say, Behold the Alpha, the Omega that taketh away the sins of the world. No, he said the Lamb. Why? Because God requires blood. Abel brought the blood. Abel brought blood. And God accepted his blood offering. He brought that offering by faith. We are informed in Hebrews chapter 11. Cain brought a bloodless offering and God rejected his offering. So since Eden, since man sinned, God demands blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Therefore, I say, if He is not the Lamb of God. He will not be King of Kings. He will not be the ruler of the earth, as Zechariah tells us. 
But he is the Lamb of God. And as the Lamb of God, he left the Father's bosom. He came into the world. He laid his life down. He shed his blood for the remission of sin. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, the Lamb, cleanseth us from all sin. Therefore, he is the Lamb, because if he were not the Lamb, he could not be King of kings. Lord of Lords. Philip preached to the eunuch, the lamb, led to the chopping block, if you please, the slaughter. But he did not open his mouth. Jesus came into this world in a body of humiliation. And, and you know, a lamb is one of the most humble, if not the most humble animal known to man, the lamb. And so Jesus is the humble one, the one who came and laid his life down willingly. Now, the last verse that I read to you is in 1 Peter 1, 19. I read these verses, and I made a very brief comment, and so I come back to them today. Now remember, I'm asking, we're studying Revelation verse by verse, and we've been studying it for many, many, well, in fact, all this year. And I'm asking, why did the Holy Spirit use Lamb of God instead of King of Kings, Creator, and many any one of the many names that the Bible gives our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right? In 1 Peter 1, 19, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb. The precious blood. Now, let me show you something. Ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. You know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. Now listen very carefully. The blood of Jesus Christ is incorruptible. The blood of Jesus Christ is incorruptible because he is the Lamb of God. The blood of Jesus Christ is incorruptible because the Lamb of God, when he came to this earth, was God in flesh. And in that body of humiliation, the Lamb of God walked the roads, the highways, the byways, the lanes of this earth. And he was tempted and tested in all points as we are yet without sin. And the lamb marched on to Calvary and willingly laid his life down that we might have life. Everything that man has touched, he has corrupted. Man cannot, man will not make a way or make or bring about or make possible redemption because it is impossible for man to redeem himself. He is totally depraved. He is hopelessly lost. And the sad thing is he has no desire to seek God until God plants that desire in his heart through God's Word. They've all gone astray. They've all turned to their own way. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that seeketh God. I want you to listen to me. Man does not even desire to know God until he hears the Word, and the Word plants in his heart the desire to become a child of God. Now, we're not redeemed with anything corruptible. Things corruptible cannot redeem. But we are redeemed. But how? With the precious blood. Precious blood. Now again, just as the Holy Spirit used the word lamb, he could have said son of God. He could have said creator, or he could have said king of kings, or the wonderful counselor, the prince of peace, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. But he said lamb. Now, blood. He uses, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. He, the Holy Spirit, uses the word precious. This verse could read, but with the powerful blood, but with the cleansing blood, but with the uh, many, many, many adjectives and many, many ways. This verse could read, and all would be true. The blood is powerful. The blood is pure. But 
The Holy Spirit chose the word precious. Precious. Why? For the same reason that he uses the word lamb, and I believe that he will be referred to as the lamb throughout eternity. And, and, and the Bible tells us that uh, his own people, that is the nation, the elect nation Israel, will know him uh, when they see the scars in his hands and when they see the scars in his brow, they will recognize their Messiah. And I believe that he will be referred to or he'll be called the Lamb of God throughout unending eternity. I believe that. Now, the precious blood, the blood of Jesus Christ is precious. The most precious thing that man knows anything about Upon this earth. Now why do I say that? Because without the shedding of blood there is no remission. We are redeemed by the blood. We are cleansed by the blood. We are born by the blood. Therefore, the blood of Jesus Christ is precious. And there is no way in the language of man or the language of earth that man could ever describe just how precious the blood is. So the Holy Spirit simply uses the word precious. Precious blood. Now we think of diamonds, a rare, unusual, one of a kind diamond as being precious. A mother takes the baby in her arms and she plants a kiss upon its little forehead or cheek and she says to the baby, You are precious. And the man that's about to marry a girl that he loves like he loves his own life, he calls her precious. Now let me tell you something, my friend. When you genuinely repent of your sin and when you genuinely come to God and when you are born of the Spirit and washed in the blood, then you'll realize as far as it's humanly possible for any man to realize just how precious the blood of the Lamb is. You are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. You see, uh, the Holy Spirit names silver and gold because there are multiplied tens of thousands, even millions today, who are trying to buy redemption and buy salvation and enter God's celestial city through their works and through their giving and doing. But you can't earn, you cannot buy, you cannot be redeemed with anything corruptible. Anything that you do out of the Spirit, I mean by that, unless you do what you do in the Spirit to the glory of God, whatever you do will fade away. But whatever you do to the glory of God will never fade away. If you're born again, and if you live and work and witness in the Spirit, you will, what your, your work, your stewardship, will be like precious stones. But if you do what you do in the flesh, it'll be wood, hay, and stubble. Now, I, I want you to listen very carefully because I must move on now. Uh, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Now, foreordained before the foundation of the world. Will you listen to me? This world has, this earth has a foundation. The foundation of the earth will never be moved. Never. The foundation of this earth will abide. One generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. We'll have a new earth, but it'll be on the foundation that God laid back yonder in the beginning when God created the heaven and the earth. Now, here's what I want you to see. The Lamb of God was foreordained. Calvary was known to God before God ever created Calvary's mountain. Calvary was known to God before God created Adam. Calvary was known to God before God created anything. God Almighty perfected and finished all of his plan for all eternity before God created one iota, one mite, one jot or one tittle of anything that is created. Before God made Adam, 
out of the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. God uh, finished salvation through the Lamb. So, Jesus, now I said this on one broadcast very recently, I believe that God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit sat down at the conference table of Almighty God in God's house, and God has a house, in my Father's house are many mansions. And I believe the, the Godhead sat down at the conference table, and I believe God laid the blueprint on the table, and God said, there it is. And the Son, the Lamb, said, I'll go. I'll go. And I'll pay. Now, he was manifest in these last days for you who by him do believe in God. You can't believe in God unto redemption apart from Jesus Christ. God that raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. And if your faith and hope is in anyone else, you are hopeless and you're lost. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren to see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again. Now here is that new creation. I said the other day, God spoke and the earth was. God spoke and the sun was. God spoke and the moon was. God simply uttered a word. And whatever God desired appeared. But there was a day. The day arrived when God could not. Now listen. I'm not limiting God. I'm saying that God could not simply because he was God. Simply because he was God and is God, holy, righteous, there came a day when God could not say, let there be a Savior, and the Savior appear. No. The Redeemer had to come through a process that satisfied the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, the purity of God, and the program of God, that process of divine necessity had to be a man in this world, in this earth, to face life as men face life, to be tempted as Adam was, and Eve, and David, and Abraham, and you, and me. You and I. Now, God provided that man, and God called him his lamb. In the Garden of Eden, God furnished coats of skins. Abraham said, God himself will provide a lamb. God will provide himself lamb. So, Back yonder before God created anyone or anything, God blueprinted redemption through the Lamb nailed to the cross, the shed blood. And then he came in the fullness of time. And all who believe in God through him are born again and they become a new creature. Yes, even a new creation in Christ. Are you born again? Are you washed in the blood? Are you saved by the grace of God? If you're not, you're lost. And I beg you to believe and be saved right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, save that soul that's nearest hell. Save every soul that's under conviction, O oh God. Bless believers and help us to appreciate our salvation more than we ever have. In Jesus' name, amen.